to me. I wanna heal your sorrow. Won't you talk to me? We'll make a new tomorrow. Won't you talk to me? me, me, me. Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Show and View, a bit of a podcast chat episode. Uh, it's not Jono that's next to me, I'm joined by the best signing Sheffield I'd ever made off the field. Yeah, I'm going to build you up, I'm going to build you up. DJ, entrepreneur, party host, video editor, it's T, ladies and gentlemen, my man. Same bro, it's quite some intro then. I mean, I mean, I believe all of it as well, because if you look at what our media were like before you came in and got involved, I know it weren't just you, I know they were a team and you'll big up the team and that, but <laughs> where we were before, <laughs> fucking hell. Um, how, did, how, did we meet, how did we actually meet you? were like a random Instagram message, weren't it? Yeah, I think I was just inquisitive with the fan base and what was going on, when I saw, I tried to, that's one of the things that I um, Chris Wilder were talking about at the time, the disconnect disconnect yeah. with the fans. So I just made a made an effort to try and snoop around a bit and steal my footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully though, a lot of the fans were kind of well, I think that's why I can the uh, people still message me still today, yeah. I think, because they appreciate that I kind of try to involve them as much as I could anyway. I think that one, like you mentioned, that were a big thing because like Chris Wilder said, they were disconnect with the fans there. The stuff we got online, I think it was like one bloke and his dog, weren't it, in an office that were just trying to produce everything. And we didn't really have anything to look <laughs> back on, really, did we? No, well, no, I think to be like, I guess um, they did what they could with what they had. Yeah. And obviously, if you remember at the time, digital media has kind of had this slow incline and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's just gone boom. Yeah. So it's kind of safe to say that like, a lot of football clubs had to kind of, you know, get up to speed with that, but... Yeah, I get what you mean. There wasn't any kind of like things you could go back and watch again exactly. and document uh, documenting what's really going on. So, yeah, no. It, it, it was good that you gave us that, but if you look before that, you're working on boxing, were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did quite a bit of, quite a bit of stuff in um, boxing, thanks to my guy. Big old boxing, the OG um, mentor, managed a lot of my, and you know, sports media type stuff. Yeah. Obviously, it taught me a lot that I've obviously used to help develop my career. So, yeah, it's kind of took me under his wing and, yeah, kind of smashed down boxing a bit. I've seen some of the things like you produced, again, good work on that. Was that always the plan to kind of get into boxing and get into sport or did it just happen? No, that, the funniest <coughs> thing about it is it all started when I, I used to do music. So, I used to rap and, like, I just got annoyed and fed up of waiting for, like, CD covers and... yeah music videos so i just thought i'll just do it myself yeah like so we used to have like these offices and make our own offices and build our own studios and stuff you know so you could just get creative so i guess that's where i kind of that's where a lot of my rawness came from you know just building the space for myself to be able to just create yeah um i'd met richard through one of the boxes that i um because i used to dj at niche yeah and one of the doormen used to be he turned pro at the matches. He was managed by Richard Poxin. So obviously when I started doing whatever with the camera and had the idea just to try and mess about or branch out, I've gone to Adam and that's how I ended up meeting Rich. And then one day I've got a random phone call um to do a first proper job in boxing. And my first job was Anthony Joshua. Yeah. For William Hill. So I just thought when I went to that, I just thought, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> just all in. Yeah, just <laughs> no <laughs> pun intended. We'd be willy nil. We're just all in. But yeah, after that, like, and they'd reached out to me as well, like the quality of work I did. So I thought, yeah, that, that's more me. That, that's got to be. I don't want to say, but that's got to be a big boost for yourself, on it? When, like you said, you self taught. I myself, you, you're not going to go on these ivory fucking college things to stick on back wall. You've you've done that rawness. You built. It's amazing how far you can take yourself when you go and do it for yourself. Uh, I think that was the nail in the coffin in terms of putting me all out there because. You got to imagine there's like BBCs there and Skies there and all these other YouTube platforms and you know people you've seen on TV yeah. and stuff. They're all in this room. Then he's this little wet around the ears dude off the ends with his backpack, yeah. just setting up some whatever, patiently waiting. I ain't got a clue what the hell's going on. And then I managed to produce quality better than everybody in the room with just my little camera in my backpack. So that, that was the wake up call for me. That's like you know what. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm doing this. This yeah, is what yeah. I'm doing. I just thought, yeah, I'm having it. Did you, did you find that it were an upward struggle getting to do it? Like you said, it was just little old tea sat in a room getting to do it. But or did you find once you put that first work out, people were knocking on your door rather than Pox and knocking on the door for you? No, I did. Do you know what? I did an interview with the, what is it, who, um, the Voice in London. Mm. Um, one of the guys there, Dreddy, um, did an interview with me because it, it watched my career. Like, and he brought up some things that were interesting because I don't really pay attention to myself. But I don't care. Yeah. So you know, it's like when I walk into the room, I was never starstruck or anything. Like you're enjoying the moment, yeah. but I'm not like, ah, oh, that person. Like, but in fact, apart from when I seen Roy Jones Jr., like best fighter ever. But yeah, other than that, fanboy for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> other than that, like I didn't, I don't, I don't really care. Um, I'm just focused on it, and because I'm self-taught, I, I'm not actually aware of what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't get the magnitude of what I'm doing, so I just do it. So in my head, I'm like, I'm having it. So there wasn't, there wasn't any kind of fear. It's just, well, that's crap. I can do that better. So I'm just doing it. Yeah, that makes sense. It does because a lot of people out there, there's a, they'll see a rigid way to do things, won't they? I've got to do A, B, C. If you can just do A and B and produce fucking good work, and you don't see the need for C, why do it? Yeah, my head thinks different. Man. Even same at United, I just like. A lot of people do it, in it like the, the the glitz and the glamour can yeah. get to you, and it's high pressure, and you've got that one opportunity, and like that can get to a lot of people. So it's not like it's a, it's not like it's a bad thing, you know, if you've got them kind of nerves and stuff. Yeah. But like my colleagues will probably tell you when it comes to that type of stuff, where where they'll be a bit like, oh, what should we do? I'm like, forget them. Yeah. I don't care who it is. My new Liverpool, my I don't care. Like. I don't care. Like, it's, it's, it's I, I, good, I just don't care. It sounds blase, but it's a good attitude to have because if you're not overtook by the moment, that's when you produce your best work when you're in your in your moment, personally, isn't it? Really? Yeah, that's kind of how I and that's how I am. I just enjoy my, and that was my thing. Even wherever I worked boxing or at the club, it was just like I'm just doing me. Yeah, right? and I'm happy being in my own crazy world. Yeah, like I just bounce into the office and I'm just kind of bouncing off the walls for no apparent reason and I can see that with you actually <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know I'll just randomly start singing out something or dancing or like I'm just very expressive yeah. and active like I just don't care I think that shows in your videos as well it's there's one video that stands out for me that no nobody else would have used it and you did that Chelsea video where it's like it's goddamn Sheffield United that guy and it's Sheffield United it's Sheffield goddamn United Sheffield United and we are dropping points like how Sparrows drops the shit from the sky. How did you find a way to get him into the video? But that's just you. That is just the way you edit. It's like nobody else would think to put that in and you're like, fuck it, I'm putting it in. It's going in. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know <laughs> that season for me is probably like overall is the best experience ever. It burnt me out. Yeah. Like, you know, as I reflect on it now. Like, and I look at things with a calmer head. I burnt myself out, but oh my God. Like, I can, the momentum of that season was nuts. And to go to Chelsea, <coughs> get that result, that was crazy. And then obviously on our way back in the car, because <laughs> 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 we're editors, we're traveling, innit? So yeah. I'll be on the laptop doing whatever. Um, manager. Like, obviously, i got to give him credit as well because he gets gritty with us, you know? Yeah. And he'll kind of be, like, doing what he's doing on the phone. My other colleague will just kind of be, you know, just uploading him while he's checking what's going on. This guy comes up. He <laughs> just hits <hissy> forever. <laughs> he's, he's playing it loud and I can see laughing in the car. Like, I take my earphones off. He's Sheffield United. <laughs> I says, what is this? I see this guy proper blowing his lid. I goes, nah. He's got to go in. Um, no, nah, like, but that's how my head is. Like, every if you remember in football, even in the Premier League and everything, the way people did the hype videos, it was very just kind of, I don't know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Generic. Yeah, like, it, it was hype, but it was just kind of like... Like a template, everything had the same template. Yeah, like, hype, goal, did it. There wasn't really, to me anyway, there wasn't really a story to anything, or there wasn't really any fun. Like, yeah. The other part, my thing with football is, or the other thing I take from it is everybody loves the banter. Yeah. Like, 
as much as Sheffield United on Wednesday don't like each other, everyone loves the banter, don't they? Like it's part of yeah. So I thought, nah, this needs to come into videos. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just me because I don't. I actually don't pay attention, but I wasn't noticing it before we were doing it at United. Mm. And then I started to see it's like it's almost like it give everybody the confidence to do it more. Yeah. That, I, that would that would be one of the next thing I said is it seems since Chef United videos were seen globally while we're in the Premier League that other people's videos have changed. Yeah, I've never thought of anything like because for me creativity is meant to inspire creativity. The only thing I can say is nearly every team. A creative from nearly every team from the Premier League down to League One has messaged me at some point yeah. to say to watch our content to take inspiration from it which yeah. you can as I say you can kind of because I've had to look back Real Madrid this and that even Real Madrid's media is actually pretty basic yeah. you know what I mean nobody was really doing it and it was like a, a diet Sky Sports weren't it yeah, like, but like, content was good. It's not me saying the content wasn't good. It was just very, just the same. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And where my head was coming from, I was doing music videos before, rap videos, boxing. So like, there wasn't many urban street creatives in football. I yeah. noticed everybody kind of had a degree or something. Nobody's kind of come from a raw, mm -hmm. a raw background. And the person who hired me at United made a point of really wanting to look for experience and an authenticness as opposed to the qualifications. Yeah. Um like they made a real big, you know, thing to try and look look for something like that. And I think that's why everything just ended up changing. Because let's get let's move on to that a little bit because how did you end up working for United? You, you said they, they they were looking for that realness, that real experience because you can have experience. I worked at blah 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 for five years, but you've been there and done it for yourself, and that's real experience. Did somebody scout you specifically? No, I didn't. Again, Richard, I'd um, I just done you you bank versus the Gale. Yeah, and I was just getting fed up, man. Like because it was good. The experiences were wicked in boxing, but I was away from family a lot. <laughs> Like we're impacting on too many things, relationship, da, da, da. like I'll be traveling all over the place. Yeah. Um, managing teams as well. So even when like I'm at home, I'm not at home because I'm like checking on you, but but yeah, have you sent this? Have you done that? Like it was a big responsibility. Um, but I think it was good for me as well because I think it humbled me a bit. Like that experience made me ready for a job like going to United because I was in the right headspace yeah. at that time. Um, I just wanted to be closer to my kids, more local again, you know, be able to do more with my family. Um, and I said to Rich, like, I am kind of getting a bit, you know, like I want to try and find something local. Yeah. He was just darting about and then just things popped up on his page. Um, United were looking for somebody. He sent me the screenshot. Like, it wasn't set in stone, but again, I just had that attitude that I'm having it. Like, yeah. that, that is, there's no way, absolutely no way. Like I even put together <clears throat> what's mad is he sent me when was the deadline? It was two days before the deadline. So as soon as he sent me, I've made this mad thing on Photoshop, this like image based PDF document thing. It says forget this, I'm making sure I stand out. Yeah. Put all the logos of everybody I worked with. Did it there, explain it in my resume. Wanna be closer to my kids, did it there, got an interview. Like, I don't know, I think I was almost half talking like I already had the job. But like, just the ideas I had. And then you had to make a hype video as part of the interview. Okay. Um, one of the, so one of the, so the Krepton Conan video, one of the first videos they released since I joined, it had a Krepton Conan tune. That was the video I did for my interview. That was the one that got that, it. For that you. was the, that's the video that got me the job. The end of just releasing it. So. That, that's got to be a compliment to yourself though. When you do <laughs> something in an interview, video. they go, right, yeah. Yeah, that's good, that. You can have the job with fucking stealing that. I'm putting that straight <laughs> on my <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? No. Uh, yeah, the, um, the men they were using it, just a load of footage ripped off YouTube, which they, they instructed to do, by the way. Right. Um, but um, yeah, the men they were putting it out. But in my head again, I didn't know who was going for that role, but in my head, I'm like, nah. They can, they can try all they want, it's mine. I'm having it. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were at United, did you get like creative freedom or did you have, did you have kind of a rigid structure at first that you kind of broke out of? 
If I look back on it now, I probably had too much freedom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I run a channel, so no, that is. This is why you don't get content, because I can never be fucking bothered, because I've got too much freedom. I'm I not. need something to manage me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I even thought... No, do you know what, to be fair, I think, like I said, is the way they, they looked for... Like... The way they put a team together there, man, like, it's, it is proper sick, to be fair. Um, because it's like the right every time somebody comes in, it complements what somebody's doing. Like they're looking for that authenticity, you know. Yeah. So with me, it's like my manager at the time before I had another one. Like she got the right balance of okay, he needs to be here. He don't need to be here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or if I the be times because of how my head works, I'm just not on it. Do you know it? Eleven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. But come seven o'clock at night, right? My head's just firing. So there'd be a lot of stuff like I'd be actually making eight pm and just doing it until two o'clock. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful really because I had a manager that was kind of wanting a proper creative, <coughs> knew how to manage us as well. Yeah. So if you could tell I'm just a bit not on it this day. It was just kind of there was no pressure. If my day was a bit more relaxed, you know what I mean. And the whole the whole office was like that. But then look at the output we had. You know, so we was never pushed too hard, you know, in terms of the club or from our managers or anything. Yeah. But in the environment you are in the Premier League and everything, you just got that desire to just get your stuff out there. And you know what? When you're listening to people, what is it called? Stevie Stevie Nichols or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. And oh, for fuck's sake. Just, that gets to me, so that's what I focus on. Yeah. Like if you, um, I don't know if you've seen that Michael Jordan documentary, but you know when he puts scenarios in his own head. Yeah. That's why I never get intimidated because the scenarios in when you're talking to the club, but like, I was taking it with disrespect as well. Yeah. So it kind of triggered my oh okay. So when Robbie from AFTV, yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm getting a point out now. I'm clipping this and I'm putting it up. That's coming from an Arsenal fan as well. Like that <laughs> aggravated me. Like the you know the dismissiveness of it like of course yeah yeah we got united but well at least at least the indian guy was kicking off called the sheffield united didn't just call it sheffield like a load of other fans did did you i thought you ignorant i yo (laughs) (laughs) the whole thing was irritating because obviously i'm from sheffield i know it's like it's hard it's grit we're not we're not soft yeah you know what i mean so i'm like We'll rip that like I'm gonna make you eat those words and I think sometimes the videos I did like some of the players have come up to me because it kind of, I think it kind of j- um, jazz them up a bit yeah like they used to watch them sometimes in you know the changing room and stuff but like that was the attitude it's like who are you talking to yeah and then when you got the result afterwards to match it it's like <clears throat> have that have some of that like no, I think mm. You've put you summed up perfectly because I think the fans, you guys in the back, always on the same wavelength. The team on the pitch, the manager, even the guys running the club at that point, we all had a fire in the belly to say, "Say what you want. We're going to go out there and we're going to do what we do best, and that's have a go at everything. We're yeah. going to have that fire." So it shows that you guys had it as well. No, we did, man. I think it was just because there weren't an identity. That's why you've seen a lot of chopping and changing between like the first two or three seasons. Yeah. There was there was not, there was a plan, but there wasn't a plan. Yeah, because it was new to everybody. Like, so I always make the point to say that because it's not like a thing of there was somebody behind the scenes saying, right, do this, then do that, then do this. It was more this happened, then out of nowhere, I've done something, then it inspired that, and then somebody else has got an idea, and it's oh let's try this, and oh like it just got out of control that way. Yeah, you know, like in the most positive way possible. It's like somebody, oh we can do. Like it just snowballed, like, like it just started going nuts, and like before you knew it, it was just everybody were kind of because of the team performance as well. Yeah, as well as everything else that season, everybody were just hype raving over Sheffield United, and I think it were the dark season is one of the best experiences ever. And that's the heartbreaking thing is that we missed a lot of it. you guys didn't you start to work through it, but missing it through COVID as fans, that heartbreak that we had of missing the end of that season as well. And you guys kind of gave us something to still live through because you were giving us those high videos. You were still giving us those looks at the club that we were missing. And I think it pulled a lot of us through, to be quite fair. It was hard though, man. Like, I think that was kind of, that for us, man, that was a hard time like, yeah. for everybody, really. Obviously, everybody at home. I mean, it, 
it's just weird, you know, being there when there's no fans. Like, yeah. Like the, you start realising how much the fans motivate you. Yeah. It's the adrenaline, like the whole, without that, it's just, you can hear everything on pitch. Yeah. I know they covered it up on TV, but you can hear everything, like every whinge and complain and this and that. Like, sorry. Oh, oh you tackled me, my leg hurt Pedro. Oh, that kind of shit. Like, I don't know, it probably did take something away from it, but I thought it was good though, because it made, I think it made clubs appreciate fans more. Speaking of the fans, behind the blades, that were, I think you've told me before, you had a big part of that, like getting that actually going, didn't you? No, they had it before. But that was part of one of the remits. I had to kind of um, renovate, try and think of, you know, fresh ideas. Yeah. So Behind the Blaze was kind of like a big, like, experimental thing for me, really. Like, I think they've got it down now. Yeah. Um, I think they've took the best of everything that's been tried over the years. I like how it looks now. Like, it's just, it's very clean and... But it's still got something to it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's still something cinematic to it, but it's still clean, edgy to the point. Um, but yeah, even that, like, it was just taking a lot of things I did from boxing. But that, I think that's what came from it, because you see, like, these promos that Sky put together where they, they get a bit more down and gritty, don't they, with the boxers, where they... And now it's got to a stage where it's a bit of a formula now. Mm. When you had your, I always remember one, it was Mayweather versus Atten, and they did that big thing where they went out to both camps, didn't they? And they yeah, did something yeah. similar with Brook v. Khan, mm. where they got into the gym with him and they were doing all nitty gritty. Mm. And I think when you and the rest of the team kind of took over behind the blades, because it went from like the alternative angle to behind the blades, mm. you brought in the fans' point of view, you brought in like getting the players in. Yeah, they, um, but they were both going at the same time, actually. Yeah. So there was behind the blades and the alternative angle. Yeah. But then it, the time it was taken to do, like, these are the things that were experimental. It just kind of didn't really make sense. To have two. Um, to have two things. But again, that's just kind of finding your way. But I think, like, teams like Real Madrid and that were doing it. So when you're first starting, the first thing you think to do is follow what the most successful clubs are doing. Yeah, yeah. But then you work out they're only doing it because they can do anything and still get views. Yeah. Um, but that's when you started like sacrificing alternative angle, condensing down behind the blaze. Then you get things like one of our own podcasts. Yeah. So it was just kind of it was forever just growing, 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 growing. I mean, uh, SU Live TV that came across obviously because we didn't have the Premier League guys in the box every week. <laughs> so we kept, we've got this big media box and nothing to do with it. Did yeah. you have any kind of input on getting that started? Yeah, not much. It was um, I I kind of like to just stay in my lane yeah um i'm not i've i've not had the desire to be like the top this or you know get the big manager position or yeah i i, I love my job like i go to work like, i just knew what i was doing yeah um so you think that's more like a comfort zone thing or do you think it was just a case of you know you perform best when you're doing certain things I don't, well, since leaving United, to be fair, I've had more time with myself. So, like, I'm a neurology at the minute. Yeah. So I'm like slightly on the spectrum, which it actually explains a lot. Well, okay. that I couldn't explain before. Um, but yeah, the routine of it. But I just felt very comfortable. I go to work. I know my equipment's there. I got the freedom. Like, if it felt right to go up and do it inside Shire Cliff, or if you know the players are not in the mood, you can go off and do something else. Yeah. Um, I didn't have to be the guy. I didn't like all the, the, the boardroom stuff, the meetings and the... The regimented shit. Yeah, it's just not... Like, it's just not me. Like, I'll just... Tell tell me what to do. I was just going to do that. Yeah. It sounds like you had a good team, a uh, good manager. Did did things change at any point? Like, with the manage, management situation that you had? No, well, obviously people chop and change and move on in it. And for everybody, not, you know what I mean? It's... I went Wilder went, that's a shock yeah. in it. And like everybody, you just have to learn and adapt. So the same way the players have to adapt to a new regime, so do we. So access you did have, you won't have. And do you know what I mean? Um, obviously in terms of behind the scenes stuff, people will move on. Yeah. New opportunities come. Um, dynamics change. So but I don't think it's so much that really. But being honest, I think more COVID was so difficult. Yeah. And then the second season, we weren't really winning. So it's just like there wasn't as much for me to do. So on top of being isolated, 
Yeah. Like I, I couldn't really do anything or there was stuff I was making that just wasn't coming out because it couldn't because of performance. That, that's one of the things. If you're making stuff like, a, how do you make a hype video for when you bought the league? Do you know what I mean? It's, you, you that's so difficult. You can't. So there's nothing like, there's nothing really. We, <coughs> we even made him, um, we still try to make graphics and you know, all this stuff to try and keep that tempo. A lot of it's not getting used. And, yeah. Like it was hard, man. The music creative, that's the hit for me, putting it out and watching all the fans just go nuts. Yeah, and yeah. Everybody's all pumped up for the game. That element were gone, weren't it? So it was, for me, it kind of felt like the metaphor would be, or whatever, would be kind of like a player now that's just been on the bench all season. Yeah, I get you. And you, you, you want to go out and smash it, but you can't do anything. Yeah, you can't score an hat trick off the bench, can you? <laughs> you can't, literally, <laughs> just like stood there. So I think more than anything, more than those changes, I think looking back now, that was the biggest struggle for me as a creative. I say, I, I know, obviously, if we've talked, we've been friends throughout COVID and everything, we've had chats. Do you find that that had like an impact on yourself at a personal level as well? Like you felt like you weren't getting your most. <sighs> you're, you're a creative guy, and mm. when you're not being creative, I, f I do think that sometimes, like myself, you, you talk to yourself. It's like I'm not being creative. I'm not getting that outlet out there. Did you yeah, find again, that you a big impact? My colleagues, man, like I used to get annoyed. Do you know, if you can't, oh, what do you mean we can't? Yeah, let's do this. Do you know what I mean? It's, even though it's hard work, I'm still like trying to find a way to make the. You know the maddest thing happened. Yeah. Um. So, for, yeah, that was that was super hard for, especially like how my character is. Like, when, like I want to just. Yeah. If if you're not creating, you, you you sit there and you think, why aren't I being creative? And you find ways to try and do it, and then you're disappointed because you can't do what you want to do. Yeah, because like the same way they had their Premier League table, there was that marketing um, table as well, weren't there? Yeah. So it's like, oh, like I was wanting to get points on that board. Because I get myself in a way where I'm so competitive. Yeah. And, oh, man, I couldn't do anything. Um, and it's nobody's fault. Like, I can't go to my manager about it or this or that. Then it's hard because you're not seeing, you know, the usual faces when you go to work. Yeah. So, like, I'm grateful that like, I got to speak to everybody from cleaners to all the way up to owners and to see what the matches, they know me on a first name basis. That whole dynamics change, and then it's turned to, or oh, you're only allowed in this zone, and then you got irritating to do your job. Yeah. Because then, to get from here to here, when you just normally go from here to here, now you've got to go up there, all the way up these stairs, back across there, back down there, to come back across here. It's like, now I get you. Why are you lugging equipment around and everything? <laughs> Which again is, that's not the thing is for. It's just obviously the thing at the time. So what? Top of being isolated, on top of. Do you think that resonated not through the back of the bike, through the first team, through the coaches, through the board, like through people working? Do you think people just got sick and tired of this regimented? You can only be here and here. Mm. Do you think it, that that's one of the things that kind of cost us really? Yeah, maybe. It's a, you know what it is? Everybody had to go through it, and yeah. so I don't want to make it like it's. Oh a, no, we didn't play the best football that season. Let's be fair, but I mean, like, you could see the players weren't happy. And you could see that the people in the ground weren't happy. Yeah, do you know what that thing did make me realise though? Like how much of a... You know when people say that thing, like when you go to London, it's very fast paced and it seems like everybody's ignorant and yeah. nobody's got time to say hello. When you come to Sheffield, it's like somebody will say hello to you or it's more polite or somebody will let you come out, yeah. you know, when you're driving and stuff. Like you realise that togetherness, what Sheffield is actually. Do you know the um, do you know that family spirit they've got? Yeah. Like they said didn't they vote Sheffield United fans some of the best fans, you know, in the league. Who voted on that? Who voted on that? I didn't they say like it was one of the best atmospheres, like it was some it was in some report anyway, yeah. but um you started realising how much that in fact we started doing them campaigns, didn't we? Like it was a together thing. So, yes. Yeah. Um, fans, players did it, like stuff, it's a and that's one of the things I think that became apparent, like, whoa, do you, even for staff about the fans, like, you just feel flat. Yeah. Do you know what, like, everything was just flat, so I just think, yeah, that was very eye-opening. 
Let, let's try and boost it onto an happier note. We've talked about fucking doom and gloom for long enough now, aren't we, really? I'm going to fucking... I'm going to pour myself a double fucking brandy in a minute, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's because it's freezing. <laughs> They're all mourning about a cowed. It's, all, uh, it's always different on your show. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right what, what's the best thing that you've ever caught on film that you weren't allowed to release? Like, funniest moment or anything like that? But wait, so if I weren't allowed to release it, that means I'm not allowed to talk about it. But. Oh no, no, nothing like dramatic. No, <laughs> no, no dramatic. We don't want any drama tea. We've fucking we've left all the drama shit on shore and we'll be out like <laughs> I want to say the story. Tell me if this is true or false. Right. So lads were feeling a bit down. Did somebody tell while well, they were playing Ed football, did somebody tell Kevin Cookson to strip off and go and run out on pit? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard this rumour. Where? Well, I wasn't there if that happened. I even, I even, he says this, this is his NDA talking. <laughs> I, haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't seen any part of Kevin Cookson <laughs> naked, thankfully. <laughs> I'm, not say, I'm not saying where this story came from. <coughs> Rob <Stane. laughs> <laughs> well, I, I definitely wasn't there. I haven't seen that like video. And any funny moments like that you, you could kind of tell us a half story or anything <laughs> that you maybe weren't allowed to put on behind the blades, maybe practical jokes, banter, things that maybe weren't family friendly enough for behind the blades. Yeah, I mean, just being you had a couple of kegs and <laughs> <laughs> so <know>. juvenile. <laughs> you know, you, you lads, your type stuff. And to be fair, they were they were a fun group of lads. Yeah. And a lot of the time it will be because how fans will perceive it. Yeah, I get yeah. Especially if you're not pre- performing, it's like, oh, they're just messing about. And no, like that's where the chemistry comes from. Yeah. That performance you've seen in that 1920 season, that togetherness, that's like literally how together they are, do you know what I mean? Um, and sometimes it's just that um, some of the players just don't want to show that much character on screen. Um, yeah. And that's partly why I ended up building such a good relationship with them because I I asked them like yeah what they are they wanting to be on camera this and that and that's why that's why I didn't point the camera in faces as much as people would like out yeah. of respect of them so and that, I suppose that built you a good chemistry with the players as well yeah yeah because yeah. So they, they knew they could trust you yeah so there's moments where somebody will have a bit of banter or somebody's cracked a joke or you know someone's got something smashed in the face <laughs> <laughs> proper lad stuff lad stuff but no like they don't want yeah to, yeah that makes sense um, which I can understand from their perspective you want to kind of hold some stuff private yeah you don't want to give everybody everything. You give them enough and you're up for scrutiny on the pitch all the time. Like, who are the funniest? Come on, you can give us that. No, I can't. Do you know what? Surprisingly, and we started um, working with him more. Like, I was saying for time, like, Osborne is so funny. Osborne? Os- Osborne is one of the, the funniest. Like, the dry humour, delivery, sarcasm. It's just... See, so, I'm on board with that. I'm on board with that. He's, he's one of the funniest ones, I thought. Like, he always come out with the one comment and you don't expect it and you're like where does that come from why, why? do you know what i mean um flex and wolf like it comes out with a couple of funny one-liners sometimes but they're the surprising ones but yeah because they're not the forefront um and then obviously you got your obvious ones like rian brewster people are <laughs> as much as i do like his little struggles and whatnot like the way he supports that team is unbelievable really um any behind the scenes like he's always there I think you could tell that it sounds daft you could tell that at Nottingham when they were it, when him and Benny both walking around in moon boots but they were there on the side up for, they were there for the boys weren't they always there when nobody's injured always there when they talk always there seeing yeah. him at Burnley like obviously the press will give him stick but behind the scenes man like two of the most you know caring guys ever but now nah, that team that team was solid man like Obviously, it's like your time with the club has come to an end. Uh, I'm going to ask you in a bit what, what's coming up, but do you find that, because Shed, you were an Arsenal fan. You've always told me you're an Arsenal fan. Uh, I assure you just said that to wind me up sometimes. I know you're a blade, you're a blade now. Nah, we've stolen you, you want to us. But do you find that the club has imprinted itself on you in a positive way? Yeah, they, they took my... Um, I, I was saying the other day, I'm forever grateful because they took my raw talents and a lot of time was spent on me. 
Um, all the equipment I needed was got. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because of the situation, um, it gave me the ability to kind of you know find myself as as a creative um, refine myself. You know, you know some more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I'm more of a useful tool in my field now. Like more rounded. Yeah, more rounded. Um, yeah, it's just like everything I'm like everything I'm doing now with the events and stuff. The the way I've progressed now, um, the opportunities that have come my way, like I've took the decision to chill for a bit. Yeah, because I was constantly non-stop a lot of personal stuff I was dealing with as well. So I just had some time out, but even still, opportunities are still there. Um, just, yeah, it's yeah positive 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 impacts all right especially the fans i still get messages of fans now like that's another crazy thing to me like i think in my head like i'm just a creative and somebody said to me like no when you think there's some directors out there obviously i'm not nowhere near on their level yeah. but people say spike these they there so it's kind of <coughs> some of you guys are just like that in the sports world i guess um plus i've done other things on our dj and presenting so I guess there's a bit more of a gravitation towards me. But yeah, man, the, especially the fans. Um, like, man, I ain't seen nothing like it, to be fair. And then to go to every club as well and see how every club, yeah. you know, operates. And the amount of times I've had my back as a club as well. So if anybody's giving me any grief or something, or there's been any issues straight on it. That's what you like to hear. Um, yeah, I mean, just, I think just like anything in the world, not, not everything's perfect. <laughs> Um, but I challenge anybody to kind of, you know, have to operate at that level. Yeah. It's such a fast pace. It's just like game, 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 game. This has happened. You've got to make a decision now. Somebody's got to make the decision. Nobody wants to make the decision. It's like, so it's constantly hard, hard, hard. So you have to learn to, what I've taken away now is separating personal, you know, from business. Yeah, definitely. Um, and just appreciating that business decisions aren't necessarily, you know, a, a reflection decisions. on how somebody thinks in your personal. Sometimes it's just crap in it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, mm. even as a shitty fan channel, and that's what we are, ladies and gentlemen, a shitty fan channel. We, we, I've had, I've had things said about me that I, you kind of take it personally at first, and then you realise that these are the same people that will sit down and applaud the next thing you do. So you, you yeah, have got yeah. to separate that personal and business, haven't you? Yeah, no, you can, you like, it's uh, it's it's important to, especially in this entertainment industry, um, you you got to be a bit more thick-skinned. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, as I look back, man, it's, like, how often are you going to get an opportunity like that, man? Exactly. Premier League, like that season, where, where you you got to be the media guy behind United's only, what, top 10 finishing the Premier League in God knows how many years? And that's the, I, it's not even so much, um, like players and that that you got to meet it's the you know to experience that magnitude yeah so you're going to stadiums that people pay god knows how much money you know to get that match day tour and you're just walking up and down yeah fucking tunnels like it's known you've seen away changing rooms you've seen home changing rooms you're like yeah i saw your uh league cup game thinking against derby and they're like you're walking out the tunnel with your camera and i'm thinking like i'd pay to be stood where you're stood now we are a camera just to see the team run out while i'm stood there it's the first time i did it actually yeah. i've walked out because my manager was saying oh yeah just did it because i'm scared at first i'm like oh yeah <laughs> oh it's the pitch <laughs> <laughs> can i step on it can i do it one day i've just not even thought i was just walking out and then i realized i'm on the pitch yeah and then i, I didn't know what to do i was a bit like Clean your crabs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. But like, and it hits you like people would pay God knows how much, yeah. you know, to just do the most simplest thing, stand on grass. I've stood on, um, my colleagues would take a mick out of me because I'm like, I'm just going to take a picture of me every stadium. Yeah. Doing something stupid. Like, after every match that we won, I'd do some kind of cartwheel or something stupid. 
Them not like, see, you gotta be professional. I'm like, <laughs> no, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, should get, you should do like a little flip through video of all those. Like, it's like every little cartwheel and daft thing you did. Like, <laughs> I probably got more funny clips than me, to be honest. But, um... Oh, these need to be released. The T <laughs> clips. Hashtag T clips. We need that in our life. But the, the, the magnitude of it, man, it was, a, it was all right. Laugh. Like, that got you through the difficult moments. You know, when you gotta do those big three hour day, yeah. three hour bike. Um yeah, just getting to see all the all the madness, like you can hear the coaches. I used to love it every time we batter somebody and then you're hearing the opposition hissy fits. Yeah. Because you've seen all the um, you've seen all the write off before, innit? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then they get the ass whooped and then everyone's walking back through Bramalane or whatever, kicking bottles and stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, Yeah man. By halfway through that first season, a little bit more respect on the name. Won't exactly. Right? So that yeah, mate. <laughs> Good feelings. Yeah, like you have to appreciate it, man. Like to to do that off my own back. How much money would that cost you? To oh, mate, don't. This is why I'm not rich. <laughs> you know what I mean, and I've not even got half of what you've done. Like to yeah, to, like Man U, Chelsea, Tottenham, Man City. To see some of them. To see some of them players play, that was like, whoa. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't so much, oh, that plays there. But you do think, wait a minute, I'm sat on the sideline and I'm filming Man City. Yeah. Like, what the... F- like, How did this happen? Kind of thing. Yeah, you do have those moments or like a ball, a shot will come or somebody's making a run. You know, when they're like, kind of running too fast or something. Then the ball's just shot past your head. And then you're looking in like a Bamiyang's there or something. Yeah. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, give it a ball back now, I'm just going to film you, mate. <laughs> it's all <yeah>. good. <laughs> <laughs> that I did start getting more confident with. There was a couple of times I've like cheekily just like held the ball to time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one of us. He's turning oh, into one of us. You know, quickly grabbed it in front of yeah. <laughs> Like I started picking up on that a bit more. But yeah, no, it is. Yeah, that. As I, like I say, with the time off I've had. Yeah, actually, yeah, I've kind of lost for words with it, really. Like, yeah, mad experience. Well, obviously, we all miss you. Uh, like, as fans, we all miss content. They, they are still bringing out good content. That's not a dig at anybody. But th- there is a difference. It is still good, but I do miss... You can tell when you edited something. And I don't care what anybody says, you can tell when you did it something. But away from that, now you've obviously left Sheffield United. What, what's going on in the world of tea? What we got co- What we got to see from you next? DJing and that that DJing. Um, doing my own events again. So Making I, more tunes for me to steal to put in my vlogs. <laughs> I, mean, I think after, after, after just three consecutive, just bam, 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 bam. Um, I just wanted to have some time off, so I haven't done any videos really. Yeah. Other than when I do a little promotion for my event. Um, I've just been trying to get other forms of creativity, you know, to get re-inspired again. Yeah. Because I, I lost my own, again, not down to the club or anybody, like, due to my own personal things and whatnot. I kind of lost my fire a bit. Yeah. Um, which I feel started reflecting on my creativity, you know, with the club coming to the back end. Yeah. Like I was burning out. Um, so I just felt it was important. Um, but one of the things my... One of the things my therapist was saying to do was go back, like go right back to what started it all for you. Yeah. Um, and just see what happens. And I'm kind of like, what do you mean? Like with the level you're at now, how would it all look? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I just, that makes a lot of sense. Just try out creative. You got all my stuff back in, and that's when I made that tune that you've been using a bit. It's a good dance tune. I'm putting um, it down there. <laughs> so then I'll um, so I'll be dropping the full EP for that soon. Um, four events happening this year. All them dates are books. Um, already sorted out stuff with the headliners. Um, hopefully doing some work with the Sheffield Sharks soon. Just, just trying to just like do you know I'm not looking at his work, man. I'm just trying to just have fun. Yeah, a minute. I think yeah. you earned that. To be fair, with uh, like you said, how fast paced you've lived for the last few years, you've you've, yeah. you've earned that to kind of step back and find your fire again. Yeah, so it's just just about having fun. Um, like I said, there is opportunities out there. So hopefully, in the next month or two, when you know, like I'm back properly. Yeah. And um, hopefully, I'll just be taking on a couple of players, you know, to do stuff directly for people. 
And one of the things I did learn from United, because I, I tried to completely detach from one life and just focus on um, just one thing. Yeah. In future, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. So I'm trying to make sure I've always got a couple of things going so I can be fully expressive. I get you. Um, that's one thing I've learned with myself. I need to have an element of being able to just do anything I want creatively without any repercussions. Yeah. Um, so it's just more of that, man. So, a couple, uh, so yeah, I'll be announcing a couple of players soon that I'm doing stuff for. And a couple of brands I'm doing stuff for. Might dibble back into boxing a little bit. Um, well, the end goal is at some point this year to go back into football because... I don't know, it's still just some unfinished... Yeah. There's things I wanted to do in it and I just couldn't quite like come navigate. Get, like come and get pissed on a showroom view vlog and uh, shower people. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> 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 but no, there's still content I think I can make that I've not had yeah. the opportunity to make yet. That's the thing, isn't it? Because when you get to that stage, you don't want to look back and have any regrets that you didn't do this, that and the other. So to not close it completely, I think is probably the best thing to have as an option isn't it yeah first of all like ah uh, because normally I, when i've done something i want to just move on but like football is sick um, and now kind of like reflecting on things i did and did not make there's definitely still some unfinished like business if you want to call it that yeah um, so at some point i want to go back into the um, sport and finish that um and then yeah i think the dream to be fair, is at some point trying to get my ass in NBA or Formula One, but the Formula One, yeah, yeah. I said that, but I'll, I'll get John to come and talk to you about that one. <laughs> I said that, but I did get. I bet it's fun to film. There's some of the opportunities that came on the back of being at United. Yeah. So there was a chance to go to the World Cup Qatar, the Rugby World Cup. Um, a lady that was recruiting for Formula One. It's like all these mad up with you, like, mate, like, how can you be mad at it? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> T, it's been a pleasure having you on, talking about all this. This is, this is this this podcast, is, even if nobody else is watching it, this one's for me. Just, <laughs> I've tried to make it not too geeky. We've not talked about Premier or Da Vinci through that. Oh, shit, I've just done it now. We, we, I've, I've tried not to talk about it all the way through, up until the I end. Thought, I, thought, I, I thought you were going to try and get me drunk, though. No, no, no. I've got to, I've got to drive home, fucking hell. If, if I start drinking now, I'm not going home till Thursday. I've got, <laughs> I've got stuff a pitch to edit. I, I've got to thank you for a lot, T, because if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have met Pox and Eva. I wouldn't be doing what I do for a living at the minute. And... I'm just glad you've made time to come on and have a chat because, you know, there's always a better life for me with that. Can I ask him to come on? Uh, we've built like a little mini friendship. I don't want to ruin that, but I do appreciate it, man. No, Thank you. Okay. Like, anytime. Keep doing what you're doing, as I said. These platforms, man, especially if you go back to the Premier League, you've, you've all got an opportunity. You, the, um, the United Way, the Chef United Way, sorry, like all you guys, just got to keep chipping away what you're doing. Man. That's it, and I need to be more consistent and stop being a dad. But you know, these kids are fucking pain in the ass, man. <laughs> you know this. <laughs> if you have enjoyed this, please head down there, please subscribe, please hit like, follow, follow to he's doing the pointing now, so you can get him on board. We'll get him on board. <laughs> we don't have to fucking animate some puppets on that shit. <laughs> but get down in the comments. Uh, any questions you have for T, he's done wheels now, so you have to send them to him directly. <laughs> As I'm sure you all do. Thank you for watching. Na, 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 na.